Hey there, happy 4th of July. You know, if you're like me, you're gonna take today and sit back and watch a nice all-American movie, like Top Gun or Independence Day or Rocky IV. You know, movies that really celebrate the awesomeness of American history. But despite its name, I do advise against watching American History X. I watched it for the first time last night and it's kind of a downer. But today we're gonna skip all of that and opt for something that's a little bit less American, but has all the trappings of a classic 80s American action movie. Delta Force One, The Lost Patrol. Delta Force One came out straight to video in the year 2000. What's it all about? Well, let's have my friend Triv from over at Trivial Theater give the back of the box a dramatic, action-packed read. Go for it. The contracts have been made. The cash is stuffed into suitcases. Everything is ready for the secret transaction that can hurtle the world towards doomsday. But there's something the armed smugglers behind the deal never counted on. The peerless commandos trained by Delta Force. Adept and improvise. Adept and improvise. The Delta Force's three-word motto is put into action in this explosive adventure directed by Joseph Zito. Gary Daniels plays... Jeez, how long does this go on for? I know, it's so long. Keep reading. Gary Daniels plays the team leader of specialists sent into territory claimed by two Middle Eastern nations. It's a rescue and recon foray, but it soon becomes a search and destroy mission requiring all of the patrol's courage, smarts, and fighting skills. Because the unit discovers the terrorists have acquired a nuclear weapon, and the launch countdown is underway. Action icon offsprings Mike Norris and Bentley Mitchum co-star. Oh, thanks Triv, that was great. Link to her channel below. She has about 10,000 great videos for you to check out. Now, I cannot wait to watch some action icon offsprings in action in an action movie. What sticks out immediately about the cast is that we have Mike Norris, son of Chuck Norris, starring in a Delta Force movie that has nothing to do with the original Delta Force franchise, which Chuck Norris starred in. So be sure not to confuse Delta Force 1 with some kind of Delta Force 4. And certainly don't confuse Delta Force 1 with Delta Force 1, which is actually just called the Delta Force. And if you're not confused enough, just know that Mike Norris, who stars in Delta Force 1 The Lost Patrol, also starred in Delta Force 3. Also, if you want to be even more lost, Mike Norris, star of Delta Force 3 and Delta Force 1, also starred in A Force of One, alongside his dad, Chuck Norris, and Uncle Aaron Norris. So many forces, so many Norrises. I say we stick this Delta Force into my VCR, of course, change my TV source, and see if this movie is good, or will bore us. Okay. The movie opens on... Well, not the most interesting thing. It's just John Reese davies of Gimli and Sliders fame, sitting in a cave keeping up with some current events on TV, getting served drinks by a terrorist babe. The newscast serves as a sort of exposition dump, something something about two fictional warring Middle Eastern nations, and honestly, I, you know, I've seen this movie about a dozen times, and the finer plot details have always escaped me. Just know that Ivan here is the terrorist bad guy. Now let's meet some good guys. A small group of IPF soldiers, that's International Peacekeeping Expeditionary Force, are doing some hot desert driving until they come upon a suspicious looking group of guys. <laughs> and points to this movie for the machine gun mounted camel, which is a thing, I guess. A very awesome thing. This incursion, or explosion, or explosion gets the movie's plot rolling. Except, I don't really know why the explosion happened, because afterward, the bad guys talk about it, but in a different language, and there's no subtitles. So we finally get to see the movie's hero. You wanted to see me, sir? James, yes, have a seat. The dashing Captain James Welford, played by Gary Daniels. I'd like to send a small recon party out. Your name came up on rotation. Seems we've lost contact with our patrol, which went out two days ago. We need to fetch him home. And he's not going in alone. So here we meet the team. There's always a team. Some movies have great teams, full of colorful characters who expertly play off each other. 
ready to get it on. This is not one of those teams. First, we meet Sergeant Mike Morton, played by action icon offspring Mike Norris. Sergeant Mike Morton is the group's trigger-happy loose cannon. Come on, let's go earn our pay. Next up is Sergeant Don Nichols, played by action icon offspring Bentley Mitchum. He's the group's, hey, can't we all just get along kind of guy. And here's the team's local tracker, Yusuf, played by Zev Ravach, who's going to be the team's guide through the desert, but he also functions as the team's comic relief. And last but not least, the team's resident babe. This is medical officer Diana Erickson, played by Michelle Capeta, in her one and only movie role, according to IMDb. I can't do the job, but if you feel my presence compromises your team, I'll understand. No, no, not at all. I think we can manage. That's right. These two have a history. And the sexual energy between the two throughout the movie is not only completely pointless, but also disgusting. We can keep it friendly, can't we? Yeah, sure. Besides, we we'll always have Paris, huh? Oh, that's cute. Oh. So the team sets off on their journey to find the Lost Patrol. And it isn't long until they get spotted by the vicious group of bad guys. Here's one of my favorite parts of the movie. Our heroes find themselves pinned between the enemy's rocket fire and a minefield. So what does Captain Welford do? Get out. What? Come on! Well, he does the bravest thing of all and has his tracker Yusuf get out of the truck and very slowly walk in front of the truck and point out the mines to guide their vehicle. And if that wasn't enough, Captain Welford has Yusuf get back in the truck and then tell Sergeant Nichols to floor it. Punch it, Nichols. Say again, sir. Come on, let's go. While he just sits on the roof and shoots the mines with a gun. Woo! We could have died back there. But you didn't. So you tell that to the guys you lost in the second Jeep. I'm actually gonna side with Sergeant Morton on this one. Captain Welford, you witnessed the majority of your crew get demolished by the enemy, and you don't even want to do anything about it. Oh, I get it. Seems like the only missile you're interested in is that surface-to-babe missile in your pants. You pervert. Anyway, not one minute after their first ambush, Captain Welford leads his soldiers right into another. And this one's a doozy. They just get bombarded by rocket fire, each rocket missing more than the last. Incoming! Watch out, that rocket is slowly falling down on you. After losing yet another jeep full of soldiers, the captain and company decide to make camp and rest up for another day of hot desert action. Meanwhile, not too far away, there's this whole other child character arc happening, and the child is pissed off because he happens to be the son of one of the guys who got blown up in the first scene. He snoops around a digging site and winds up stumbling upon the terrorist's secret hideout. A secret hideout with a secret nuke. Back at the Jeep, the gang comes upon a sizable group of random nomadic people. Mike Morton gives his official threat assessment, and Captain Welford ain't liking it. No, we're not here to fight. Yeah, don't tell us. Tell them! I'm still in command of this truck. Yeah, we started with three. Again, that's a really good point. <laughs> so after that mess, the gang finally finds the remains of the Lost Patrol and also find that dirty desert child. He's a dirty desert child. Yusef, what's he saying? He claims his father was the tracker killed on this mission. It is because of you! My father is dead! He has sworn revenge. He has included us among the condemned. Perhaps we are. Ooh, I know we're in a hot desert, but I just got chills. Oh wait, no, I'm just sick again. Oh! Fortunately for the gang, the angry child happens to know the way to Ivan's secret cave. But before they bust in and save the day, Captain Welford needs to have a talking with to Sergeant Morton. A heart to heart. Because Sergeant Morton is still a sad sack after murdering that guy. I'm guessing we're about to witness a real poignant moment of dialogue between these two soldiers. We all make mistakes, Mike. 
That ought to do it. Who is that? Is that Dr. Phil? Consider that PTSD gone. <laughs> so here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for. The good guys are storming the base. Jesus, this music is giving me heart palpitation. Can you like that? DEC Super, 14 parallel processors on the semi C. Yeah. It's just like making love. Oh, God, I thought we were done with this. Oh! Before long, half of the group gets captured by Ivan and Ponytail terrorists. No! Allow them to live with their failure. John Reese davies is obviously a really good actor, but Ivan here is not good. He's more or less a parody of a Bond villain. He's the kind who captures the good guy, lets them become aware of the evil plan, and why? What's the point? The plan, by the way, is that the bad guys are gonna bomb their own country with the nuke to help motivate people to go to war with the neighboring country. You can see the twist coming from a mile away. The nuke itself is pretty weird looking. You can tell the production did their best making it look bigger than it is. You can see these lights at the top. I think they're trying to play some perspective trick to make you think it's some huge launch tunnel. The missile itself looks impressive until you see an action icon offspring walk right next to it. The good guys get the drop on Ivan, but... I do not think so. Then they get the drop dropped right back on them. You never cease to surprise and delight me. Wow, Sonya really had quite the character arc. If you're wondering why I haven't mentioned Sonya since the very beginning of the movie, it's because that's the last time she was in it. Night takes queen. Ivan is so mad he uses his dying words to use a chess analogy to sick his bodyguard on Sonya. The bodyguard takes so many shots, the only explanation here is that the bodyguard is indeed a robot. Gotta be made out of metal and weigh a ton. Proof of this is that when he falls on Sonya, she dies instantly. All hell breaks loose. While Captain Welford does somersaults, Sergeant Nichols uses tech to disarm the nuke. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. The warhead's deactivated. I weren't finished, sir. Not yet. The charge I set goes off in two minutes. We've monitored a violent tremor in the cave region of the Ayazad Desert. Natural. It's an explosion, sir. A massive one. Wow, solid line delivery. And this is where the editing of the movie gets a little weird. This guy here is explaining that an explosion already happened, but we never saw it happen. But then we go back to the cave and the team is escaping. Yeah, there's the explosion. Very odd that they would put that scene before, you know what? It's, we're done, we got it. Oh, and they're doing that where are they now thing that they did at the end of Animal House? <laughs> what is it? With a gut full of both rock and roll and soldiering, Welford left the IPF. After a brief stint as a Euro-style caterer, Welford is now back in uniform at his post in Ayazad. Euro-style caterer? After quitting the IPF, Morton took a job as a US Postal employee. He now resides at a Texarkana Federal Correctional Institute. <laughs> Now a fledgling screenwriter, he's titled his memoirs of his IPF days as Delta Force won the Lost Patrol. Is this movie a giant joke? Well, that's pretty weird. Anyway, do I recommend watching Delta Force won the Lost Patrol? Yes. It was directed by Joseph Zito, who's no stranger to directing low budget action movies. He was even attached to direct the Spider-Man movie Canon Films was trying to produce in the 80s. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And what the heck, let's do one of those freeze frames that they just did at the end of that movie. Just make sure that you freeze frame on a good expression and write something good. Oh.